Well, I suppose I owe you guys another apology. You know how I am. I love doing the interior. I love building. It's in my name, Rob the Rebuilder. But I, I have to show you this. I'm kind of a little bit proud of it. Look at that. That is going to be the front shelf over the dinette area. So this is obviously that Shasta pattern that you'll see in Shastas, especially this 1960 Shasta. And then those little scallops underneath. It took a lot of tedious work. Tedium, is that a, it was tedium? I don't know if that's a word, but tedious is. And so these are the shelves and they are like, this one is right up against here. This one is good camera work, glad you stopped by, is offset a little bit. So they, they don't go this way because there's not enough room. So they go behind each other or in front of each other. So this one here, it just opens and closes behind that one. And there'll be a little knob on the ends that'll allow it to stop there and stop there. And of course, this one right here, it will go behind that one. Just kind of like your, your standard Shasta. That's how it works. I didn't show you how I built it, but I wanted to show you what it looked like. But what I do want to show you is you remember that big, big cabinet that had the uh, icebox in? Remember, we're putting icebox back in. I've been trying to save as much as I can. There's a lot that's just rotted out. So I saved this frame and there is much that I can use, much that I can use. Uh, had to repair this piece. You can kind of see where I glued it in. Uh, that came out, but I thought, man, we just, we got to save that. That's going to be the part that goes at the top, at the top. And you can see right here, I labeled everything. That's number two, which will correspond with number two. There, so it'd be like that. Then we come down here to number three, and this is the cross bracing. So number three matches number three up there. 3A, 4A, because I forgot to label them at the beginning. Uh, the big problem is that the bottom of this was rotted out. And this is the part right here that went under it. And obviously, it's rotted out. And you can see I put extend. But I put number four, number four. So, the hard thing about saving so much, now listen, restoring takes way longer than rebuilding. I, I would have had this done by now, but I've got probably two more days in it. But I got it sanded down, and I have this piece. And I cut this off. I think I told you that. But I cut it down. Uh, what I did, though, because, you know, I don't throw anything away until I'm done with it. This is a rafter. They used really thin rafters. I don't know why. You know, we use one by fours. This is a one by two. So, but whatever. I saved it. So when I sand this down, it will be equal to this. Because it's 1960 wood. So I can... Put this where that should be, right there, across the bottom. It's not rotted. It'll strengthen this. This will obviously go into the floor. It will be strengthened. And so I saved this. I am so glad I saved it because I think it's one of my last pieces uh, of extra that I saved. So when I sand this down, it's going to match this. So when you walk in and see that cabinet, everything will be amber shellac, obviously. But amber shellac on this kind of 1960 wood versus something brand new like this one by four, it would look odd. It would look odd. It would catch your eye and your eye would not be happy. So that's where I stand on this. I'm gonna start putting it together and I'll, I'll do my very best to keep you guys updated on this one. Here is the frame for that big closet that's on the door side, right next to the door actually. I've got uh, some wood putty on there. Again, I went ahead, as I told you a little bit earlier, and used the original frame most that I could. 
I did have to find this piece, that piece, that piece, and that piece. But I had those uh, roof rafters, so it's all it's gonna be good. I got some put some wood putty on it now. Gotta let that dry, and then I'll sand it down. And before I do that, here's the back side. Now I've got to take some of this eighth inch ply right here, and I've got to cut it to go in here. Look at that. So it's got to run that ridge. It's going to be 20 and 5 eighths wide. And I think probably about 5 eighths of it's going to go down in that ridge. And the same thing over here. So I've got to build two of those and get those glued in in place. And I'm going to try and do that today. I wanted to catch you up to where I was so that uh, you don't get mad at me for leaving you behind again. Just putting a bead of glue down the ridge there. All right. And I think this is gonna go in right here, I hope. Very precise measurements were made. And this uh, plywood seems to think that I want it to curve, and I do not want it to curve, unless we are making a roof. Then I want it to curve. But right now, I do not. So, hey, there it is. I'm gonna run a couple uh, little tacks right in through here, see what happens. Just to keep it honest. And there we go. Clean up this glue a little bit. But that'll be just fine. I might put something in here just to brace it up. And let it sit there. Then I'm going to do the other side. But you don't need to watch that. You just watch this side. All right. I got this, these walls glued in, they're tacked in. Now we gotta add a little bit. They're, they're pretty solid, solid. I just got these little guys in here just, just in case. There, there's no problem, but better safe than sorry. Why do I keep reaching out to you? Hold my hand. Um, we've gotta get our frame in. So we've got to do some of this and some of that. So, um, that's just what I'm gonna do. And of course, the first thing we always do, we're just gonna put, put a little glue down. There we go. Uh-oh. Coming out kinda of slow, I guess I didn't really clean out the tip of that very well. That's all right, we're getting plenty. It's only three quarter wide. From the factory, they went three quarter by three quarter. So we're going to mimic what they did at the factory. Now, of course, as you know, I never leave Home Depot without several of these. So I'm just gonna get this first one kind of on here so I can get busy with the rest of them before all this glue falls off. Try to make my adjustment, keep it as even as possible. Get these two on here, because this, right here is what's going to this right here is what's going to screw in through the wall so that's what's going to hold it in so we've got to make sure that we're really good on our glue and we've got these set where they need to be 
Not sticking out too far, not sticking in too far. These clamps are great. I'm telling you, I'm so glad that I invested my 98 cents worth into them. Now, the other thing, that's the bottom down there. This is the top, can't hardly see it, but we're going to brace it up. You can kind of see it a little bit, I guess. So let's give it a little, little glue action here. I know this isn't probably the most exciting part of the video, but I don't want to leave you guys behind on this one because you've caught me leaving you behind on a couple of other ones, and I, I do not want to disappoint. Ah, get in there, get in there. All right. That is right on. And I don't have any more. Well, I say I don't have any more, but guess what? I walked by the Home Depot and I grabbed two more. So I do have more. Just not right handy. There we go. We're gonna get this guy put in here real quick. And then this one will go to the ceiling and it will put itself in the ceiling. Now, I gotta do the exact same thing over here and then I'll put one more here because uh, down here is going to be where the ice box remember they're going with the ice box and then there will be a nice little cabinet space up here and so we've got to put one right in here right in here so that the shelf there will need to be a shelf right here so we want to make sure that we've got an area for our shelf so that's what I'm going to do. You don't need to watch me do that. You just saw me do it there. I'm just going to do it here on reverse. You can turn the turn it sideways and watch it again. It'd be the same thing as doing it over here. All right. I'll be back here in a minute.